Here, when do y'all usually start seeing swarm cells? Just out of curiosity. First week of April? Okay, so y'all can actually capitalize off of those swarm cells um, and make a split. And that's how I did 8 to 80 my first year. I did it a little differently. My name's Seth Hill. I live in uh, Lake Mont, Georgia. I run about 80 colonies. How many of y'all are new beekeepers? Don't even have bees yet or just got bees a few years ago? Okay, so there's a few of y'all. Uh, so let's start with just some basics. So first year beekeepers have a couple of options. Uh, you're gonna get what's called a package, and I didn't bring one with me, but what that is is there's three pounds of bees and a queen, and you slide that into probably one of these boxes. I've never actually installed a package. But you install it in a single deep. Uh, I don't really like packages. They, uh, they're, a little, they're a little cheaper. That's a good benefit. But the way I like to go is a fry frame nuke box. They're a little bit more expensive, but you get a good package. Um, you get a box that holds five frames, uh, deep frames, just like this. And you get, in theory, five good frames of bees, a good proven queen, and uh, you're off to the races. The way we build our nukes, is uh, we put about four frames of brood in them and a frame of food. So when you get one of these home, it's ready to stick in one of these. This is a 10 frame box. Uh, some people run eight frame, which is a little skinnier. Uh, once you get these guys home, they're ready to go in a deep box and you're off to the races. We like to feed ours a little sucrose syrup to get them to draw out foundation a little better. I didn't bring any comb with me. I actually don't have any hanging out. But this is what we call foundation. This is plastic uh, frame. Uh, some people use the old school wax with the wire. The bees like that better, but they, for what I do, this is much better. It extracts a lot easier, and you can shake and do all this and bump and do all, you know, a lot of different type of stuff with it. So I like the plastic, but it takes the bees a little bit more persuasion to draw that out. Uh, the way we like to do that usually is with sucrose syrup, one-to-one uh, -one mixture. Uh, depending on, you know, the time of the year, you don't want to feed them in the honey flow. You kind of want to feed them going in and get them ready to where they peak as the honey flow's coming on or right after it starts. Um, but anyway, so that's how I like to get started. Um, how many of y'all want to kind of expand y'all's apiary and get things going a little farther than where y'all are at now? Like, so, with oh. The, with the losses we have, we have to. <laughs> <laughs> we have to, to live. Yeah, I got you. Well, what you do is we're gonna pretend this box is loaded, right? It's got eight, nine frames of brood in it. They're ready to swarm. And we're gonna say there's, uh, let's say there's two frames with good queen cells on them. You find two good frames of brood and you take one frame that's got two good queen cells on it and you open your nuke box, your empty nuke box from the nuke you've installed and it's grown up in this big guy. You take three frames out. This has got your brood and your queen cells on here. Slide that bad dude down in there real careful. Be sure not to crush your queen cells. And then let's say you have a frame of honey on the wall. Slide that frame of honey in there and put the lid back on and let that bad dude cook for a month and come back and see if your queen's mated and ready to rock and roll. Uh, what, with the remaining resources, what you can do, this is one of my favorite methods of splitting. Uh, it's the use of this guy right here. If y'all don't have one, I recommend finding somebody that can build you, buy you, or somehow produce some. This is called a double screen board. Um, the original make and model was called a snail grove board. It had all different kinds of entrances off the side and the whole bottom was a screen. You don't need all that business. All you basically need is a flat board with a rim on top. And then you need, um, I think you gotta have over a 3 8 gap so the bees don't touch and fight each other because what this does is separate the bottom colony from the top colony. So what I like to do, go ahead and set out my other queen cells and my other frame of brood. And then put my double screen board on. Now there's a little entrance here and on a single, take your double screen board and I'm gonna explain why that's so skinny in a minute. Um, take your double screen board there. This is an empty deep box with a few frames in it. You take those frames out. This is your brood and your queen cells here. Take another frame out. That's Make sure. the alternative to doing this. Right? Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And I'll explain why this is a little bit better in just a second. Take your frame of food and the same amount of time. Let that bad dude cook for a month. The benefit from this is, and you're, we're going to say the queen's in the bottom here. 
This hive body is a little bigger, right? And if it gets a little cool, but you got the drones, you can get stuff mated. The heat from this <laughs> rises through those holes in those screens and keeps this little guy warm. This is also a great method for overwintering small colonies, two and three framers. Uh, you can get through the winter on a big, big honking single or a big honking double deep. You can overwinter like a three or four frame cluster, two, three frames. I've done it before. Twos don't hang on as well. Three and fours do better, but you can do it. Um, bees are pretty tough little critters if you uh, put them through it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so we've left our queen with, uh, let's say we leave her with three frames of brood and then all these empty frames we pulled out of these other two boxes. We put back in here, shove her over there. And in this configuration, if you want to feed her to finish out drawing that foundation, this is called a Man Lake cap and ladder feeder. There's two. I do, yes sir, these are a good option. I've got one and I had a tremendous problem with bees drowning. Yes sir, you will. Um, they don't work great on smaller colonies. Uh, we don't like to use them unless they're about three or four frames plus because of that. Um, well, the old school variation of these, they actually just kind of modified the top real quick. I can take it apart and show you the inner workings of this thing. Yes. Inside of this is ribbed, kinda, and the bees would crawl down in there and get the feed and they'd have floats you could put in here. So it's kind of the same thing with the dowel rod principle. Um, I like these because I run the double deep method, especially because I run, uh, I took colony south for the first time this year, but um, you've always got a way to feed your bees internally. You don't have to worry about bringing jars or buckets or any other kind of feeding apparatuses. You've always got one in the colony and you can just pop the lid and feed if you need to. It's real quick, fast, and easy. Do you leave them in year round? Uh, yes, sir, in my double deeps I do. My singles, like for example, let's get back to our double screen board configuration here. In a single, I'll run it like that in the springtime. So I've, always, I've got a way to feed this bottom colony. But when this top, let's say the queen mated, uh, we're back a month from now. Um, well, maybe not from now. Um, I imagine whenever y'all get drones and whenever the queens are ready to make and y'all start seeing swarm cells a month from then, you can pull this dude off, set it wherever you want it to go uh, on the double screen board. And once that thing, uh, a month later, this thing's gonna have grown again. And then I'll pull that feeder out, replace it with some foundation, put a lid on it. Now you'll notice on my lids, there's a jar cap in the middle. That's so I can put quart jars. You can put up to a half pound honey jar on there and I imagine a mason jar and you know, grandma's cannon jars will probably fit it too. So you can take that out and you can feed buckets and jars. Um, so anyway, take that, put that on top, put my jar or my bucket on there and let that ride and let it fill out these other two foundation frames I just put in place of the feeder. And when I went from eight to 80, I'll split it again. I'll do the exact same thing with the double screen board or I'll have 10 or 15 nuke boxes, you know, set up and ready to go and I'll spread my brood and my frames out. Um, that's how I expanded so fast, so quickly. Uh, the other way I did it is um, I grafted my own queen cells, which is a whole nother can of worms once again. But that's a fast way to grow an outfit um, anytime you can get queen cells. The key, and that's another thing too, you want your colonies to kind of, you know, be really hunky-dory and accepting your queens and their queen cells. You don't want to just throw a queen in there and expect them to take it. You kind of got to make the conditions right for, you know, you got to set the mood for the occasion, so to speak. But anyway, so if I was going to make a split, let's say I'm making a split with a mated queen. This is my favorite way to do this, uh, to make splits with mated queens is with the double screen board once again. So I'll take me some frames out and that can be comb or foundation. Uh, get my feeder staged up and ready. My queen, let's say this is a good heavy food frame. That's starting to get into your brood nest. And um, you wanna keep a couple frames with her. Let's say you keep three good frames of brood with your queen in the bottom. And we'll say this is two frames of brood right here. Early in the springtime, you're gonna have trouble with warmth. That's another reason for your double screen board. So you put some foundation back. Put your feeder in. I'll go ahead and fill that up with a one-to-one -one sucrose syrup. Get your double screen board, put it on. 
Got your two frames of brood right here. Put it over your double screen board. Now, I'm keeping the bees on the frame. I'm not going to shake the bees off. Take your two frames of brood with adhering bees. Slide them in there. You want to slide your queen in between the two frames of brood. So you want a parker not necessarily down in the brood nest. For speed, we like to just barely part the top of the frames, put the cage just under the top bars with the queen cage facing down a little bit, and then close them back up and apply a bucket. That way, everything is once again hunky-dory. Gorged bees will accept the queen way faster than starving bees, or you know, there's gotta be some stimulation going on um, for them to accept a mated queen real well. Now, if I was gonna do that with a queen cell, I might only give them a quart jar. Um, the fast way I was making splits when I went from 8 to 80, we're going to bust this back down into the single once again. She's fat and sassy, uh, lots of brooding bees. What we're going to do is take a frame out, start with the edge, and then we'll say that's a, this is a food frame here, say another food, then you're getting into your pollen, and then you've got a brood frame. What I'll do is I'll shake the bees off park it somewhere, another brood, shake the bees, shake the bees. So I got three brood frames and I'm leaving her with about two in the bottom. Mated queen in the bottom, good to go. Um, with two frames of brood, food, and then I'm gonna fill the feeder again um, to get her to draw that foundation out. You're I'm not gonna... looking for the queen, you're just no, no, I'm just shaking the bees off. I'm not caring about the queen. Uh, just being a little gentle, pulling the frames out as to not roll or anything. And then I'm going to put on one of these little guys right here. This is called a queen excluder. Um, they've got a lot of different configurations of them. There's wire ones, plastic ones, uh, wood-bound wire ones. I like the metal ones, personally. Uh, they're a little better quality. The plastic ones will get you by, but the, uh, what you get for a metal one, they last forever. And um, they're, you know, it's just a better product. So I'll put the queen excluder on. Put this deep box on. Take the frames out to make the acquired space. And then I will put my assets above the queen excluder, directly above the brood nest. You don't want to put them on one wall or the other. That way they'll stay warm. And then I will put the lid on. No feed, just put the lid on. Come back in about two or three days when I'm ready for my queen. And then what I can do is I can just take this top box off because I know my queen's in my bottom. There's no way she can be up in my top. Take the queen excluder off. Put the double screen board on. Slide the box back over with the assets. Take the lid off. Slide the queen or the queen cell in. Put the top on. Feed and come back two or three weeks later. And you did that 10, 10 times. Yes. Well, actually, I did it a little differently. I did it in a nuke box, but I did do that. Because see what it is in the springtime, obviously it's a little cooler. And brood chills really easy, especially when there's not a whole lot of bees up there. Another pro to this method is when you're doing it with a mated queen, all your field force comes back down to the bottom box. So you've got all young bees ready to accept your queen. And that's, that's a big thing. You don't want a lot of field force in a colony you're trying to requeen because they, they don't want another mother. They're just, you know, they're dead set on the one they have. Um, but anyway, so that's how I started in the springtime and I worked my way up to about 20 like that. And then I started doing what they call, I guess you'd call it a dirty split. So now picture, oh, let's say late May, early June. Your single has since grown into a double deep. It's a big dude, it's full of bees. Let's say there's uh, 13 frames of brood in this bad dude. It's ready to split. So what I'll do, is I'm not even looking for the queen, but I'm not even gonna worry about shaking. So I had about 30 of these white nuke boxes right here. Took two frames out, went into each box, found one food, Found a brood with young larvae or eggs, stuck it in there, and let it ride for a month. 
come back and there'll be there should be a queen if not you know you don't get as high quality a queen that way but it'll give you a queen you can ride into winter with um you don't want to make that salt small split too late uh even a double screen board can't save them at that point they won't be able to grow up that fast um you can do that kind of split with as many frames of brood as you want three frames is a good good starting spot two frames is a you know pretty decent split but if you're really going for numbers of splits a one frame brood brood one frame food split is the way to go why did that you don't think that made us good a queen so what happens when you because um, when you raise your own queen cell you have a really good control on your genetics and how well the cells are fed because a small nuke does not do well at drawing out a queen cell there's a couple of different types of queen cells and i'll go into that in a minute the queen cells y'all are probably going to start seeing in probably not even a few weeks are called swarm cells. Those are the natural instinct for the queen to reproduce and leave the hive and, you know, go into trees and houses and wherever else they can find a hole and start a nest. There's another kind called an emergency cell, and that's when bees sense they are queenless. There's no queen mandibular pheromone in the colony, and that's what happens when you separate. Yeah, exactly. That's what happens when you just take a frame of brood and they will select larvae, I think anywhere from three to five days old, to start raising a queen cell. Queen cell larvae are generally, when you're picking them to raise them for your own stock, you want them to be between 18 to 21 hours old. And the way we build what we call a cell builder is we want that cell to get fed every 40 seconds by a young nurse bee. So that colony has got to be absolutely overloaded and full of pollen, nectar, all the good stuff. A one frame brood, one frame food split is not gonna give you that. In a bee yard, when you're mating, like when you're trying to make queens, you want them to be able to find their house really super easy. So we'll have, just for example, if you're in a bee yard of say 20 colonies and all your boxes are white and they are facing the exact same direction and they got the exact same lid on them, they're gonna be really confused when they come back. But if you got uh, a white nuke box like this, and all of mine have different letters or numbers or whatever on the front, and we'll park those just anywhere on the ground as long as the entrance is kind of facing downhill, and we'll turn them all different kinds of ways and put sticks and rocks and whatever around them so they can hone in and come home after they get mated. So that way we're not guaranteed a queen, but we're kind of hedging our bets a little more than just throwing something out there and hoping it works. With the double screen board method, they can kind of get confused a little bit in a bee yard of like 20 or 30 colonies. Not much. It still happens a little bit. Uh, pallets are terrible. Uh, if you're going to try to make queens on pallets, I very heavily advise not to do it. Um, it works, but you don't get nowhere near the amount of success that you would if you were doing it in a nuke box or over a double screen board. Yes, sir? Did you say you put that, uh, that nuke board on the ground? Oh, yeah. Right on the ground. So... We build our nuke boxes a little differently, I guess. I'm not sure how most people build their nuke boxes. But we put sometimes uh, three-quarter inch cleats that are about two inches wide on the bottom board. So that way, when we put them on the ground, it's not full contact on the ground. You can just set them on the ground, come back, pick them up. Let's say you got a new bee yard here. No boxes. You got your bottom board there. The night before you want to set up your bee yard, you got about 20 of these dudes on your bee stands or wherever you want to put them. You put that guy right in the spot and you know if it's raining one day, skip a day and come back when it's dry and nice. And the bees are happy. You move your nuke box for a little bit. Put your bottom board wherever you want it. Set your deep box. Take out about six frames. And go ahead and install your nuke and they're ready to ride. Um, that's the way we build a lot of our bee yards. We'll take queen cell. We call them queen cell mating nukes because we put queen cells in them instead of mated queens. Uh, we'll let them cook for the allotted amount of time. Uh, usually it's about a month. That way they're good and you know laying and everything. And then um, we'll put them in a deep body with foundation. Uh, maybe one or two combs if we have any laying around. Usually it's a foundation. And then we'll either give them a bucket or a jar to start uh, stimulating them to re rear some comb. So yes, ma'am. We call them 
call it around here, I think, walkaway splits. Yes. That's what it's, we've been referring to it in, um, as I know it. But you usually put those nooks somewhere away from your big hives or? A pretty good distance. You can put them in there kind of close to the bee yard, but they do get mated better when there's not as much confusion and flying around. So where you want to put them is not necessarily the field edge, but you want there to be a lot of like little scrubby trees or rocks or fallen timber or something that they can kind of mark and hone in on uh, when they're coming home if they haven't been eaten by a dragonfly or a bird or blown off course by a big wind. But anyway, yeah, exactly, yeah. Living a bug's life. Uh,